Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date's August 27th, 2019. And what another great day today when the market is red, we are green. Miss Vegas is going to give us our watch list and we're going to go through it real fast. Okay, well, good afternoon, everyone. I got to tell you what an amazing day we had. I mean, you got to always just trade what the market wants to give you. And that's exactly what we did today. I'm gonna, we're going to talk about Costco, Bind, um, Coca-Cola, Netflix, and Planet Fitness. So I'm just going to get right to it. Um, so I do want to definitely say that ne uh, Costco was absolutely on fire today. Jim's going to talk about the, sh the chart momentarily. But I do want to talk about Costco because I did alert uh, this one yesterday, uh, way before the action that it had today. And um, I didn't even know that Costco actually opened its first store ever um, Tuesday morning, which was obviously sometime, I think China's ahead of us with the clock. Um, but they definitely had to close early. Apparently, there's a rush of customers. Apparently, just to get a parking spot at Costco, three hours. And people apparently didn't even mind waiting. They were happy to wait. Um, but they had to shut their doors at 2.43 p.m. There's a lot of chaos outside. I mean, you guys know, I'm sure everyone that's listening has been to a Costco store. It's always busy. But my goodness, this was so exciting for China to see a Costco store. And look at the people. I mean, Jim can show you. He's showing you all the shoppers lining up to pay, lining up for some rotisserie chicken. Look, look at the security at the door waiting. People are just so excited to get into the store with their shopping carts. And let me tell you, if you look at those pictures at the top, they were loading up the shopping carts like no tomorrow. I mean, they just couldn't keep up. Um, and this is just the first of many locations that Costco is opening. Um, I guess there's going to be more. Uh, apparently, also, I just want to mention something quite funny. I mean, apparently, uh, parents that were at Costco had to call the schools to tell the school that they were going to be late getting their kids from school because they weren't going to be able to make it because they were stuck in Costco. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my God, if you can't, you're going to pick your Costco shopping over picking up your kid from school. I thought that was quite comical. But anyways, um, I got to say, we hit this bang on. I was watching the money flow yesterday and I said, we got to get some Costco calls. Uh, we definitely had some calls here. If Jim can show you quickly. Um, I did give a Costco call yesterday. The $280 strike was $1.57, which is $157. And then we also have, after that, we had the um, 282.50 calls, which were $80 each. And the 285 calls were $0.38, cents, which is $38. Can I just tell you the picture right below in the green? Those calls that were $38 each for ex the 285 strike, they went all the way up to a thousand, like a thousand dollars per contract. That is insane. That is insane. And I can tell you for a fact that one guy from the room, he had, I think, more than 10 calls and he only paid $380 for his contracts. He made big money on these calls. I don't know where he sold them, but he said, Thank you so much. I've made so much money. It's insane. Um, Rich called also the 295 calls expiring also this Friday. Those were 17 cents called an hour after the open. They went to 267 plus. Uh, amazing. I mean, over a thousand percent. Like, this is crazy. So just fabulous, Jim. So now I'll just turn it over to you to talk about the Costco chart because I'm still LCI. holding and I anticipate uh, an upgrade on Costco on the stock so let's see what the market's going to do tomorrow but Jim give us uh, your update on the chart all right well here's the chart on Costco we're going to pull up the yearly I always like to pull up that year first what I have here is a TTM trend chart and with my moving average of the 200 the 34 and the 9 EMA as you can see Costco at the beginning of the year was down here at 189.51 and today we bounced all the way up to 292.38 almost a hundred and some dollar run on Costco and we think this can break 300 real easy so we're gonna go ahead and pull up the 20 day chart on it Miss Vegas said 320 maybe so I'm gonna pull up the 20 day and you can see the great run it has had it does like to 
have a good run, pull back, have a good run, pull back, but this China news was pretty big for it. And you can see what happened. It pulled back to a support level of right around Monday at 275.40, and then today we closed at 292. We closed at 292.38, and right now after hours we're at 292.35, as you can see on the time and sales here. The, what I call is the tape. I'm going to add a resistance line to the width of this here candle right here, right around 292.40 is the resistance we need to break. We have a high of 293.44. We have different support levels that we're going to be looking at on this trade and I'm drawing a few of them down right now as you can see. This is on an hour base chart on a 20 day. So I do have a support level I'd like to see at 287.94 before I jump in the trade maybe if it decides to pull back. And let me repeat that if it, if it wants to. We always let the trades come to us. So I've got the one minute right here. I'm just trying to figure out where a good support is on this. I guess this is a maculin run from where it ran at. And I'm going to stick with my the 287.57 right here. It's a 287.94 for the low support. And I'm going to put in around the second support area. It's going to be in this channel at 288.96 to 288. 289.81 and then that first solid support and I'm doing these in channels is going to be 290.63 to 291.32 so anywhere in between them channels is where you're going to find support at and the resistance we need to break is going to be this 290 and I'm going to adjust it to 290 not much though I mean 293.29 is a resistance we've got to break we'd like to see this go to 300 if you're in, in it long, uh, the option trades are the best way to go with this stock right now. And try to get just right outside the money, in the money. And if it decides to go ahead and start pulling back, even play the puts on it. But we're very bullish on COST. The next one we're going to be talking about, and remember I called that low support right down here between 287.57 to 287.94. If you see that number, that's where you want to probably jump in this trade. You have an ascending triangle right here where it kind of broke out, and then it's just beautiful trade today. Just when you see trades like this, these are the ones you want to follow. The next one we're going to talk about is one that seems like half the traders are bearish on, and the other half are bullish on, and I think the bullish ones are right, and that's BYND. Oh my goodness, Beyond Meats. I mean, I tell you, I can't keep up with the stock. Um, they now have, um, they're definitely testing the Beyond Meat um, fried chicken. Can you believe this? They're now testing this with Kentucky fried chicken. It's going to be Beyond Fried Chicken. They started this at a single restaurant in Smyrna, Georgia, near Atlanta's SunTrust Park. And they're adding the chicken to its lineup of plant-based products, which include ground beef and sausage alternatives. And KFC is going to be the first nationwide fast food restaurant to taste the Beyond Meat's plant-based chicken. Now, apparently they're saying that, you know, this is very popular, obviously, in the supermarkets. Um, and uh, people are saying, you know, uh, remains to be seen if there's going to be a market for this. Uh, but we know that the stock has surged immensely from their initial IPO. Um, it's traded a lot higher, I mean, 10 times higher than the IPO price. And this is, you know, KFC, which is owned by Yum Brands, is joining a list of fast food and quick serve restaurants that are obviously adding meat substitutes to the menu. So although uh, KFC is going to remain limited to one store for now that's testing this chicken, um, you know, don't forget Burger King also made its plant-based impossible Whoppers across the United States. And they also started as a small test in St. Louis. And also, if you guys remember Tim Hortons, they were offering the Beyond Meat breakfast sandwich as a small test and then expanded that across Canada. And also Dunkin' Donuts, remember, is also testing the sausage and egg sandwich in New York. And apparently they're going to expand it and all the outlets across the U.S. So 
Beyond Meat is just going right to these fast food chains and getting all these little trial contracts, I guess, to see if they want to become a customer. And they're probably doing it. I wouldn't be surprised if they're even doing it for free, like supplying it as a test pilot to see if there's a market. But people are saying it's delicious and cannot believe that this is taste, that it's a plant-based product. So that's what they're hearing that it tastes just like the, the chicken and that customers are going to be amazed. And that came from the chief concept officer of KFC, Mr. Kevin Hoshman. So Jim, your thoughts on Beyond Meats? Cause that's been one of your little babies and the bears are talking on this all the time. It sure has been. And um, I'm showing you the website here and they have some recipes here on this page right here. I thought it was kind of, kind of interesting. You know, I might be have me some real hamburgers and even add some of these new recipes on here, how to make a delicious hamburger. But I do want to try this Beyond Meat out. And so we're going to go straight to the chart. And this is one that, like I said, seems like 50% of the, of the I call bears out there are bearish on it. And I'm a bull kind of trader. I like to trade off the bulls. So I always like to look for the momentum plays. And this is one that we called out a while back. And I want to show you exactly what I mean by a great run. What opened up, the IPO opened up. This is a new IPO. It's about four months old. It ran from $45 all the way up to $239. We were surprised when we once we broke $100 on this on this trade and it bounced all the way up to $150. And then we had the $200 hit, pulled back to that support. And I've been calling this out perfect. I mean, really perfect. Ever since it hit that 239 and it had that little offering, it's pulled back a little bit. So I'm going to go to the 20-day chart right now, and we're going to look at the 20-day, and you can see exactly what I mean. It's had a 20-day sell-off, and we found a little bit of support right down here on these these three days, and that's when I called it out again. We had a 140.57, and it was just trying to, and once it retested that triple bottom, it did go ahead and break out. So now we're sitting at the top, let me repeat that, at the top of that channel, which was right here, right at 147.26. And we pulled back and hit that a couple of times, and now we're starting to break out past that resistance that we broke previously on this triple bottom breakout. And this is a 20-day chart. So I'm going to pull up the daily, and I want to show you a little note I wrote to my friends. To my bear friends, this is what you call an ascending triangle. Just in case they weren't aware of what a sending triangle was, it's when you have higher higher lows and then you have like a little breakout point, which I call a uh, resistance line. And once that happens, that's when you really start to pick up the mustard. And what I mean by mustard, I mean by momentum. We did pull back to the 152.03, and then here we had beautiful run yesterday on this trade, and then called it out, and then I'm going to pull it up and show you what happened today. Just a beautiful after hours run. After that broke out from that ascending triangle and pulled back and hit that 152.03, we hit a resistance level pre-market, so that was our targeted place to hit. We did start to see a downtrend, so I was telling people in the room maybe you want to take some profit on it. And right after I said that, it consolidated a little bit, created a little ascending triangle right in here, as you can see. You got the higher lows and then you got the neckline and bam here it did it broke out again so yeah you know I'm not always right 100% but it did run up pretty good after that and created a new high at 161.43 we had to break a sit resistance of 160.78 so here we did pull back again though for, and after hours it's kind of flopped around a little bit but this is one that I want to suggest how to play it and play on the pullbacks don't try to chase the trade. Wintertime you start to see a pullback, let the bears have their way with it for a little bit. And then all of a sudden the bulls are gonna step in and take care of the trade for you. And you'll start seeing by the momentum that it picks up. So the next resistance we got is 161.43. They have a wonderful forecast on last time the earnings came out. That's what I am giving the momentum to this trade at. It's just now getting out there and it seems like they pop up with good news all the time. And this is BYND. So the support level 
is going to be no lower than this 155.61. I think that's a strong place to get in. If not, it'll pull back right here to the previous high that we had down here. And that's going to be in the resistance lane, a support level of right around 154.55 is going to be your low support. If it does not pick up after this 155.61, the resistance that we need to break is going to be this 161.34. So right now, it bind, B-Y-N-D, I'm very bullish on, and I'm bullish on cost, C-O-S-T, Costco. The next one we're going to talk about is something that I drink probably a six-pack a year of, but it's definitely one that a lot of people love, and that's Coca-Cola. Yeah, so you know what? Coca-Cola made new 52 week highs, and also just noticing here, there was an article here that uh, Coca-Cola uh, got rid of their New York Fifth Avenue building. Well, I guess they're taking the money from the real estate. Uh, apparently, it's a 19-story building. It's at the corner of Fifth Avenue in Lexington. Um, it, and um, they did acquire the building in, as part of a takeover of Columbia Pictures, and it was used as a retail and office unit. But there's no details on to, like, what is this going to become? Like, what is this building going to become? We don't know. Um, apparently, there was some chatter that they were going to get $900 million for this building. Um, it's pretty big. I mean, it's 335,000 square feet. So, I mean, that would be good money for Coca-Cola. But that's not why we're buying the stock. So we're definitely trading this from the option side. Uh, took the calls here, option calls on Coca-Cola, the 5450 calls. And uh, got those at 61 cents. They have pulled back. Um, but you know what? Coca-Cola looks like a very nice chart. And definitely looking for a continuation. So, Jim, let's hear about uh, Coca-Cola and what you see coming our way. Yeah, Coca-Cola. Now Coca-Cola is creating a culture of diversity and inclusion, which is pretty cool to me. I mean, it's it's an outstanding company. We're going to start looking at the chart here, and I'm going to type it in, and I'm going to post it. And that's KO, knockout. Well, that didn't pull up there, so I'm going to change that to red. Come on, baby. There we go, Coca-Cola. So let's pull up the yearly chart. I always like to look at that first. Another great run, man. When I crystal ball came out, I told everybody, I said, man, this sucker's gonna gonna have a great 2019 year. Just look at what happened here. We got a double bottom low down here at 44.25, and we're here we are now at 54.72. We do believe this is starting to pick up momentum. Look at the drive on this. The volume in, in is going to start picking up on Wall Street. People are back. Kids are back to school and parents are at home, trade on the desk, and the volume just starts to pick up this time of the year. So the last resistance I had here was at 54.21, and we've broke past that here in the past week and a half. I'm going to look here for a double top. I think this place right in here, I'm going to magnify this up so I can get this perfect. Right there. Yeah, see, we've tried to break that a couple times there at 54.72. That's going to be the resistance that we need to see. So I'm going to pull up the 20-day now and get another look at the 20-day and try to find something that I missed. I see a support level that I'm real strong about, and it's right here at 53.85. you got the next support level right in here, right around the 54.21. And I'm going to try to find a little equilibrium right here for the first support. This is a 52-week high that we're talking about today. Happened right into close. Right there at 54.42 is going to be the next first support level. The resistance that we got to break is going to be this 54.84 area. If we can break past that, we're going to go up to new highs. We could set a target on this trade to at least $60. I'm not a professional analyst, so, but no, I, I do know my, my charts. I've been at it for about 15 years. So let's go up to the daily one minute. See if we see anything else. We do see a new resistance level right up here, and I'm going to chalk that one in at 54.93. So this is how it's going to go. Low support, and oh, I see something else right in here I want to tap into. So we got a call. When I say low, low, low support, I mean low, real strong buy. That's going to be here at 53.85. The third support is going to be at 54.05. The second one you've got right down here is going to be 
actually let's yeah let's not let's raise that channel up 5421 to 5442 let me start this over again okay I'm seeing something in here I want to also chalk in okay low 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 support 5385 third one's going to be here at 5405 then you've got the second one at 5421 not very big of a spread there and then you have so I did you know you have the first support channel and there's another one I missed I just keep going on this trade I'm gonna color these in okay let's start again 5485 for strong buy third supports gonna be here between 5405 the second one's gonna be in this channel of 5421 to 5434 and then your first support level is gonna be right here at 5442 all the way up to 5451 and I'm doing these in channels but I, I like to do it that way sometimes when we're on these bigger tickers. I can be a little bit more precise, but you never know. The resistance we got to break is going to be 5484 to 5493. And this is Coca Cola. We're bullish on it. We got a 52 week high breakout. Don't be surprised if it pulls back a little bit. This is not one of our stronger tickers. But the fact that they sold that building in New York, I think, was a big deal. That was a beautiful building. And that's going to put a little bit of money more in their pocket, which they're not too concerned about. And it's run by a good CEO. So that's Coca-Cola. The next one we're going to talk about is going to be a bottom play that I've got in today. And that's going to be Netflix. Yeah, so you know what, Netflix, I mean, listen, I mean, this is a, a good company. Um, you know, there, there's still, a, there, you know, there's been a lot of pullback with a lot of stuff going on. And the market, some of these large caps have pulled back. But, you know, Netflix is also... Uh, coming up with new ways to find, you know, to be competitive. I mean, obviously, we know Disney's coming in the market and uh, Roku TV. I mean, they're obviously trying to stay afloat here and uh, they're coming up with some new things. They have a new uh, system that they're coming up with called, I don't know if there's a name for it, but they're saying that you're going to be able to sift through the catalog of, um, of all the new arrivals. There'll be three tabs to join the app from your smart TV. And they're going to have different sections, brand new, coming this week, and coming next week. So it's kind of giving you an easier way to navigate with recently added content. Normally, you have to basically go through all the categories to find new releases. And now they're going to basically try to highlight it for you. So they're trying to make it easier for you to find things that you want to stream and watch. Um, I have Netflix personally, so I'll have to pay attention to that new feature. Um, but uh, I'll have to check it out. I, I maybe it's already there and I just didn't even notice it. <laughs> so, I mean, you get so used to just scrolling. I just usually scroll through the categories and just pick something I like. Um, so, Jim, let's hear about Netflix because uh, taking it here on the reversal. Yep. Um, this is the way I see Netflix. I'm going to post up the chart right now. I got in this trade mm -hmm. twice today, cost average down. I mean, I only got three contracts, and they were at, uh, one of them was at the 305 strike for August 6th, and I got two contracts for $1.60, and then it, when it dipped down, I got another one for $1.34. Right now, I'm up 60 bucks on the trade, and that's, that's my trade right there. So let's pull up the chart. Let's pull up the yearly. I want to show you the sell-off that it's had. You know, it's had a pretty harsh sell-off here, and I think they're trying to rebound personally, I'm coming out with some new ideas, trying to catch people's attention. To me, Netflix is still number one, and even Disney came out today and said, you know, they might not be as yeah, tough as Netflix, yes. but they'll also coexist along with Netflix. So I think that that Disney dues kind of brought it down a little bit, but we are really undersold. We did have a triple top up here, right around the 384.92 area, and right now we're down here at 291.03 after hours. So we did have a pretty harsh little sell-off right in here, big gap that needs to be filled, and we've scalped this before in options when it was above 300, 320, 320. It did run up to about 336 and then we've had a solid pullback ever since. I'm going to pull up the 20 day chart now and take a real good gander at it. We had a triple bottom down here and today it pulled back below that triple bottom which I thought to me 
We did have a wick down here right around the 288.60 area, 288.22. And we did mm -hmm. poke a little bit beyond that too on a big wick. So I'm thinking and I'm hoping that this thing's going to rebound and get back up to 295. And if we can break that 295, we'll start breaking above that $300 area and hit a resistance up here right around 311, 372. But this is one that's going to, that you can watch. The options are going to be kind of cheap right now if you want to try to do the option way. The support level is going to be down here at 288.56. The pivot point is going to be right here around 290. I could almost call this the first support at 290.61. And then that second, probably first little pivot point area is going to be in this little channel right here at 293.38 to 295.72. If we can bust that, we're going to get back up to the highs again. But 20-day chart, we were at 333.53 all the way down to 287.20. I do believe this stock is oversold, and that's going to be NFLX. Then we've got one more that hit TV today on CNBC, plus Miss Vegas has been talking about it, and it's called PLNT, not planned. Yeah, so... That's right, and not definitely not a plant, uh, although that's, the ticker looks like it's a plant. And this is Planet Fitness. I mean, Planet Fitness is in the U.S. and Canada. They're a big franchiser, and they have uh, locations all over. And they did, you know, they were mentioned in Fortune magazine 2019 as the 100 fastest growing companies list. They ranked number 58. They have a three-year top performance in revenue, profits, and in stock return. Uh, they have more than 14 million members, and this is what I like. They're going to open between 250 to 260 locations system-wide this year, which, by the way, is a record for the brand. Um, I think, you know, Planet Fitness, um, you know, is very, it's a very, like, no-frills kind of a store um, workout. I was going to say store, but, you know, kind of a no-frills um, gym. I mean, you go there. It's very clean. I will tell you, I've been to Planet Fitness. Very clean, uh, friendly people. You go. There's tons and tons of equipment um, in terms of treadmill and, and machines. Um, you know, it's very reasonably priced. I mean, it's not even expensive. So if you're looking for something reasonably priced, they're 24 hours, seven days a week. Um, and they have like a juice bar. They have towel service. They have, um, if you wanted, people like to suntan. I guess people that are into like fit, fitness competitions. So they're doing very well. They have reinvested in expanding their footprint across the country. Uh, they're dedicated to successfully execute on their strategic and developmental plans. And I am not surprised to see this stock where it is. Uh, I was predicting to see this in the 70s. We already hit $70 today. We are in these option calls and the ones that we have on Planet Fitness, I've got to pull them up here on my, on my, on my dashboard here. But the ones that we have, uh, for those of you that are looking to follow it, um, we have the ones for September 20th. And these are the $70, uh, $75 strike. And we also have the um, $70 calls as well, which also expire September 20th. And there was um, a repeated bullish pattern bet in Planet Fitness. And we're noticing it's getting a lot of momentum play in the stock. So we were already in this from yesterday. The $70 calls uh, were $1.30. And uh, we also have some October ones as well. We're seeing activity on the ones for October 18. And those ones were going for $2.45. Again, the strike is $70. Uh, so we're definitely going to be in the money now starting, uh, you know, started today very late in the day, but I want to see how this is going to go tomorrow. So, Jim, let me hear your thoughts on Planet Fitness because I'm very impressed with how this is acting and I'm very impressed with the company. And I think it's a, you know, longer term hold. This stock, I've been watching this for a while, keeps going up, up and up. What are your thoughts on Planet Fitness? I think you called it yesterday at a perfect time and day because we did pull back pretty strong on it. We did have, we do have a TTM trend that was in a downtrend, and then we hit the 200 EMA on a yearly daily, 
and we bounced up off that 200 yesterday and then today we made another gap up into the green at 69.95 that's where we closed at you can see it did have a great run throughout the year and then all of a sudden it started pulling back a little bit it hit a resistance level up here right at double top at one at 81 and I'm gonna close it down it says 81.90 but my resistance level is at 81.66 I do that because of the base of that candle right here. This is what empowers me to make that make that call at 81.90. So let's pull this back up to a bigger chart here so we can get another big picture of it. We did pull back pretty hard and we hit that 200 EMA and that was right here at around $67. And right now we're at 69, almost $70 right now. So that's a $3 bounce in two days. We can run it up to this to this 34 at 72.51 but I want to draw a couple trend lines on it I see a double support level right in here and I'm going to chalk it up at 71.22 got another resistance level support level here at 69.73 and we've got another resistance level up here oh I'm going to say right there on that 34 EMA at 72.32 we're still halfway bear, bullish on it because we did not cross down below the 9 or the 34, did not cross down below that 200, which tells me that we're about a 50-50 chance of this thing going up to a bullish pattern. And I do believe that we are at a support level on that 200 EMA. So I'm going to pull up the 20 day now. We're going to get a couple more resistance levels on this stock and we're going to try to find another support level that if it decides to pull back. I'm seeing one right in here at 68.83, and then I'm seeing another one right down here at 67.63. Then of course we've got the bottom low support down here at 66.39. Don't think we're going to get down that far, but that's going to be your third support. Your second one, 67.63. Your first one here at 68.83. And right now we're at 70 bucks after hours. The first resistance levels is going to be the 70.49, 71.26. And then you could probably get up into this little space channel up in here and have an area right around the 72.32 LCI. to the LCI. 72.70. LCI. i got to turn this thing on mute. I thought I had it on mute. Hmm. I'll figure that out later. She's... Trade ideas is popping off tickers as I'm talking to you. So that's going to be it. We've got the low support down here at 66.39. Second one, 67.63, 68.83 for your first. The pivot point in this channel right now is going to be here at 69.73. And then you've got your other resistances that move on up. We could get back up to the highs up here right around 75 if we were going to go along with it. I see a couple others. Stop this video at any time and jot these down. Compare them to your numbers. Don't always go off ours. We're just here yeah, to help yeah, you out. Yeah. And that's going to be the stocks we're going to be talking about today here at I Love Stocks. Also want to mention on our website, we do have a place right here, the Twitter page. Follow us. Hit that follow button. See how many subscribers we got right now. We've got 503. We've just had this out for a couple of months. We also have our links here to Stock Twits. Vegas is right here. Follow her. You can also follow me. And that's going to be the one right below her. She's on top because she's the boss. And that's going to be it. All right. Be sure to subscribe yeah. and ring that bell. And Vegas. Great job yeah, today so, with options. I mean, that, that Costco yeah. was something else. You know what? I am so excited. I'm so proud of Costco, um, really, because it just, again, I cannot stress this enough, how a small account can seriously make money. I have a girlfriend of mine, and she's just shocked. Um, she is not actively trading, but I was talking to her about Costco because, you know, her and I usually go to Costco together. And I was telling her last night, you know, I, I got some Costco calls because I'm really liking the action in the Costco and I was watching the uh, money flowing into Costco. And she says, oh, let me know how much, you know, how that works out. So I actually gave her the update today and I said, can you believe it? Those $38 contracts, how much money they made today. 
and she cannot believe it. Like she's never, she never even knew what an option is. And I, I was explaining it to her and she's shocked how $38 turned into over a thousand dollars. I mean, obviously if you held it as long as, you know, the high of date, but even if she didn't and she was in that trade, she would have been happy, she said, even if she turned $38 into $300. So the opportunity to make a thousand percent, I mean, I just haven't seen this kind of return on penny stocks. I mean, I love penny stocks. Don't get me wrong. We still trade them. We still call them. I love swing trades. I love stocks in general. But I got to tell you, options is so changing the lives of many people especially when you don't have as much cash. And uh, a lot of people sometimes are afraid of offerings and things like that with penny stocks or reverse splits. So they're focusing on options. But anyways, uh, amazing day. Thank you so much. Love it all. And uh, really enjoyed uh, the day. It was just so much fun. We just found an opportunity to make money. So thank you, everybody, for helping us. Jim, anything else? Nope. This is the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Please remember, we are all around traders. We like to do it all. And I'm just beginning options myself, but I've been in this market for 15 years every day. I know how to plot them charts out and give you supports and resistances. I'm a swing trader, I'm, I'm a scalper, and I like to play options. And I'm doing very well with them here lately. And that's my new, my new trend. So today's August. 27th, 2019, and we love stocks.